Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Overkill bringing you another video for the F-14 Tomcat. Um, today it's going to still be a part of the basic fundamentals course but we're going to show you something a little bit different. Um, today I'm going to show you guys how to effectively set up the F-14 in the mission editor and what the options are to you. There seems to be a lot of confusion, some frustration getting the F-14 to perform the way you want um, and just to simplify some things. So I'm going to hopefully clear some of that up for you guys. Um, who maybe don't understand the documentation or just, you know, maybe not someone who likes to learn like that. Um, I do apologize for the lack of content over the last few days. I've been pretty damn sick. I've um, been battling a nasty cold. I'm sorry if you guys can still hear it. Hopefully I come out nice and clear for you guys. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is I've already got a carrier down and a uh, uh, tanker up in the air. So all we need to do is set down our Tomcat. And let's set him to client. And don't ask me why I always have to name my shit. It just drives me crazy when I don't. I have to take 201 or my uh, flight mate will be pissed when I take his plane. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the number of waypoints. Everyone's tripping out because you only have three waypoints. You only have three <sighs> waypoints titled as that. Um, and, and I'm going to explain what that means here in just a minute. You have to think about waypoints completely differently in the F-14. Okay, well, the F-14 is the first one that I've seen that does waypoints like this. And get waypoints out of your head and just think navigation locations. Okay, because it has a bunch. Okay, there, there's more options than just three. You just have to understand what you're looking at. They're more defined in the Tomcat. Okay. Um, Sorry about that, I had to cough. Um, so jumping right into it, let's start out with the home plate, okay? Your landing location, all right? So the landing location is determined by a couple of different ways. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just set my plane down here. If you start in the air, so you have an air start aircraft, the home plate or um, location with Jester, and Jester has in his wheel of navigation locations, he has one called home plate. And we'll go over this much later in, a, in, a, in the next video when we get into actually navigating the bird around. Um, but he has one called home plate. And how home plate is defined is a couple of different ways. So first way, this is the easiest to understand, if you are starting in the air, this is critical. If you're starting in the air and you create a waypoint and you title it over here and set it to landing, okay? Whether it be the carrier, or I'm going to edit so it doesn't create a new one. Oops, and it moved my carrier. Or if we set it to land, okay? It does not matter. The landing location is the home plate designation with Jester. So if you tell them, I want to go back to our base, I want to go to, I want to get back home, you tell them home plate, okay? Now, here's another way that the landing or home plate location can be determined. So let's turn this into a flyover point. So no longer a uh, landing location. And we're going to set our waypoint zero, our starting location, to take off from ramp. So if we have only airborne waypoints, we don't have a waypoint specifically designated to landing, but we started, oh, wow, that was weird. We started um, from the ground, okay? Whatever airfield or carrier that you started from will be the home plate uh, waypoint or nav point is what I'm gonna call them, okay? Because we really wanna get waypoints out of our head when we're talking about the F-14, all right? So your home plate is either designated by a landing location set over here on the waypoint title or if you have not designated a specific landing location, it will be whatever um, location you started the aircraft from if it was started on the deck, okay? Whether that be on the runway or on a carrier. Now, here's the third way that we create one. If we start on the deck, but also create a landing waypoint, home plate has now become the carrier even though we started from the runway okay so keep that in mind even if you start from the ground but you designate a different landing location home plate will be 
whatever you designate it as. Now, why is this handy? Is if you don't want to use one of your quote unquote waypoints as a landing location and you start from the carrier, well, then all you have to do is tell Jester to go back to home plate and you'll automatically return to the carrier or your starting location. Now getting into the actual waypoints, we have three of them. So here's how I would use them. And this is really broad, minimal thought here. Okay. Let's say at waypoint one, okay, we are calling this a rejoin location. We're joining up with another squadron of F-14s coming from a different location. So we'll call this our rejoin location. And then we're going to add a waypoint and let's come up here and this will be our holding location. So now all of us F-14s are going to hold because we have our target over here. Okay. This guy right here last week attacked an ice cream truck and we're just pissed as hell about it. So, but he's being protected by a bunch of surface to air missile systems. Okay. And so we have to hold over here to wait for our seed aircraft to take out the missile system so we can come and bomb the crap out of this ice cream truck attacker. Okay. So that's going to be our second waypoint. And then our third waypoint we're going to create to get us into the general vicinity. And again, you wouldn't really need to do this because attack can, but we're just throwing an example out. Our third waypoint is going to be heading us back in the direction of the um, tanker. Okay, it's going to be put in the general vicinity. We can activate our attack and we'll be nice and close. Easy peasy. Well, now how do I know how to set up my target? I, I want to know where the target is. I want to be able to nav to the, my target. Well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. What we're going to do next, we're going to come into this window right here. You can see where the square is. Okay, and it says navigation target points. All right, and it's add is already highlighted by default when you click into the window. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here and I'm going to put title of this guy as HA for hostile area. Okay. Now this is just a navigation point and this is, this is somewhere where you can tell Jester to go to. Okay. So he's going to navigate us and it'll show up on your, um, VDI. Um, it's going to show us and your HSD as well. It's going to show us how to get to this hostile area. Now the hostile area, we're just going to title HA. It has to be there so that way we know we're entering a, an AO. Okay. Now I know that I want to attack my, uh, target here from sort of a, a westerly direction. I'm going to fly to the West and, and bomb the shit out of him. All right. So then what we have to do is we have to create an IP. Okay, you'll hear that commonly, for those of you who don't know, the, the IP or initial point is the location at which we turn on to target. Okay, so we'll fly to our initial point and then we'll bank left in this situation and head on to our target path. So we're going to put that guy here and we're going to change it to IP. Keep it capitalized, keep everything uniform. All right, so now we know our IP location. And again, this is another location that Jester can be told to steer our navigation system to, so that way we can fly to it. And then now we want to know exactly where that little bastard is. So we're going to come down right here, right on top of him. We're going to drop another one. Now we're going to title this as surface target. And you can use this with the uh, precision guided munitions. Um, so this is a uh, GBU 33, I believe uses the GPS coordinates to um, find its target. The surface target, and it's important to keep the naming schemes. These naming schemes have to be there. H A S T I P. They have to be there. All right. Now the next thing we do after we drop our bombs is we go to a fixed point or egress location, a point where we, every aircraft that makes this strike will fly to this next location and then turn off and either a rejoin the pattern for the strike or, you know, turn to RTB or, or go to their next tasking. So we're going to strike from the West and then we're going to sort of egress to the Southeast and we want our egress point to know where that's going to be. So we're going to call this our fixed point for FP. Okay. Now we have our, um, hostile area. So we're going to fly into the AO. Then we're going to steer to our IP. Once we reach our IP, we're going to change to the surface target. 
deploy our or employ excuse me our arsenal on our target then steer to our fixed point and then from our fixed point we can return to navigation either go back to the hostile area go back to our waypoint two for orbit whatever it may be but so just right here we have one two three waypoints four waypoints if you count your home plate okay your designated landing spot okay and um, we have our hostile area for five six for the initial point seven for our target location eight for our egress spot and there's even a couple more okay for example let's say after we egress here we're worried about I don't know retaliation oh ice cream truck killer has brothers and he's gonna come and send his cousins or his cousins are gonna come after us all madder than hell so we're going to need to defend Kasab afterwards so we can even create one more here let's go to Kasab and call this our DP keep it professional guys okay for defend point okay so we have hostile area defend point surface target initial point fixed point and the waypoints which are set by name here okay which we've done up here with hold and rejoin and then um, our tanker location so we could even add that in there real quick so let's go to edit so I don't add a new one and let's just do this guy so we'll call him uh, gas up okay now on top of that you also if you're using the data link will have data link waypoints one two and three a data link surface target and a data link fixed point okay so there are many other options in regard to creating your waypoints um, or navigation points excuse me I keep saying waypoints that's really bad verbiage for the Tomcat um, our navigation points for the Tomcat okay you're not just restricted to three you just have to understand what it's doing and these acronyms and naming schemes can also be found guys on page 370 of the uh, f14 Tomcat documentation released by Heatbler okay so make sure that you guys go and check that out it has quick um, uh, titles that can be viewed or uh, indexes bookmarks and basically you're looking for you can just go in there and look for a DCS mission editor function specific to the heat blur DCS f14 okay now a couple other things while we're in the mission editor that I want to show you guys so the next thing is your ammo type uh, she has three different or four different I guess um, variations you have 20 millimeter which is high explosive uh, incendiary so this would be used for uh, light armored targets Jeeps trucks other aircraft okay uh, you have 20 millimeter armor piercing okay armor piercing is going to be for your heavy armor uh, BTRs things of that nature okay and then you have your armor piercing and high explosive mix combo so that's sort of your uh, catch-all you really don't know what you're going into so you know take a little bit of both and then you have 20 millimeter target practice okay okay so the last thing I want to take a look at is our um, additional waypoint options or additional editor options I think is what that's supposed to say um, so this is going to be aircraft specific so we can even have multiple aircraft in the group and we'll select unit one okay um, so looking at aircraft one the first window here sets your M61 burst mode. Um, that means that when I depress the trigger, the gun on the F14 will disperse 200 rounds. Even if I continue to hold the trigger down at 200 rounds, it's going to stop firing. Okay, I'll have to release and depress the trigger again for another 200. And you can set it to 150 or manual. Manual means as long as I hold that trigger down, the gun's going to continue to fire. Okay, here you can set your uh, ALE 39 loadout this is your countermeasured uh, stores so it start at 60 flares come all the way down to 60 shaft okay you can see that it balances from left to right all right uh, LAU 138 this is an external uh, countermeasure pod that you can fill with the shaft INS reference alignment stored this means that if you want to skip the INS process you can just hit check and once the aircraft is started up the INS will be ready to go okay your TACAN channel preset. I have my TACAN on the carrier set to 74 X ray, so I can type it in here as I have. And as soon as I activate the TACAN, it'll automatically be set to 74 X ray. Same thing with the ILS channel preset. You can also do it with the KY28 encryption key. This is for the uh, 
encryption between the aircraft. And your laser code currently showing 1688. If we want to change it to 1678 on one aircraft, but I want aircraft number two to be on 1688 as it is by default. So I'm flying with a buddy. My buddy, I want him to work on targets over here with this JTAC. I want um, my targets to be 1678, but they're close enough together where we don't want to conflict with laser codes. This is how you would set that up. And you can see that aircraft one is still on 1678 and aircraft two is on 1688, even though they're in the same group. And we can do the same thing with aircraft three. We can take him down to 1668. Okay, so you have 668, 88, and 78. So this is where you would configure the laser code for the F-14. Okay. I think that's about it. That's really the only thing I wanted to show you guys today. Um, I hope you guys like this. I hope this cleared up a few things as far as navigating the uh, different waypoints. And you will find, remember, all of these locations, the HA, um, IP, ST, um, and FP. Um, you will find those in Jester's um, navigation menu. Okay, and we'll go over that in the next tutorial when we're actually up in the air. Um, I'm probably going to wait for the next one until after Wednesday, hoping that there is a bug um that will be fixed not hoping there is a bug that will be fixed but hoping that the bug that exists will be fixed um jester has the ability to enter in ma waypoints manually using the f10 map when in flight unfortunately you have to be able to name that and the problem is that right now when you create a mark point on the f10 map and name it um you lose all control of your keyboard um, so it's a bug that hopefully needs to be, hopefully will be resolved. It's affecting all aircraft. It's not just the Tomcat. It's just the Tomcat specifically uses that function. So, um, hopefully on Wednesday that will be resolved. If it's not, then I'll just continue on and come back to it when it is. Um, but, uh, we'll definitely get the navigation tutorial out by Wednesday at the latest. I'm just hoping that, uh, it'll have the content that I want you guys to see. All right. Any questions or comments, please leave them in the field below. Remember guys, as usual, hit that like and subscribe button. Um, make sure you hit the uh, bell if you want to be alerted to the next videos that come out and I will catch you guys soon. Take care.